So thank you. Thank you very much for, for being here today. I really appreciate you getting up early and uh, staying up late to, to attend this webinar. So as I mentioned in the, in the group, the webinar is about, oh, I just wanted to give something back, just to say thank you to everybody who commented on my book cover design, just uh, to move that one step closer. And I mentioned in the post that this, this webinar really is about the key steps into creating what I like to call a lifestyle passion business. So what I like to do is I'm just going to share my screen with you and bring up, bring up my slides. So you should hopefully now be able to see my slides and see a little video of me too, hopefully. So if, uh, if, you, if you can let me know in the chat box just to make sure you can see my slides. Oh, hi, Krista. How you doing? You can unmute yourself. I think you know how to use Zoom, don't you? You can unmute yourself uh, in the bottom left-hand corner if you want to say hi. Yeah. Hi. How you doing? You well? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. How are you? Really good, thank you. Thank you for getting up extra early to, uh, to be on the call today. I really appreciate it. That's all right. <laughs> cool. I was just saying to, to the other guys on the call that I've, uh, I've set up so that you should be able to record your session. So if I um, double check. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so if, uh, if you hit the record button, you can record your own copy, but I'm recording a copy too. So. Uh, mm. Sorry, that was just a train. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, if I'm, what I'll get you to do, Crystal, if you want mine, is if you mute your microphone. And, yeah, yeah. And at any point throughout, if you have a question, obviously jump in. The, uh, the other guys on the call, Hazel and Carmen, they, uh, they haven't got a microphone, so they're going to be typing in the chat. So I'll keep checking the chat periodically. So at any point, you guys have any questions, uh, fire away. We'll have time at the end for Q&A as well. So if you have questions then, that's cool. Uh, but as I said, as we go through, so feel free to, uh, to jump in. So, yeah. Again, thanks. Thank you very much for being here. I really do appreciate it. It's early where you are. I'm going to get cracking. So, the the whole purpose of the webinar really is just to explain the key steps behind building a lifestyle passion business. And I think I mentioned in the post that this is really about being able to move from having a a hobby, if you like to call it a hobby, or a passion business, something that you're really passionate about, and you earn a little bit of money at the moment, but it's not enough to sustain your lifestyle. So you have a job, a day job, or you may have some other forms of income that are supporting you on a day to day. But what you really want is to grow that passion business. So the idea is that you're able to quit your job in the shortest time possible, but with the required income to, to do so, so that you don't suffer any loss at all when your passion business starts to fly. So let's get started. Let's get this show on the road. So this is me. I'm Stephen Bringenshaw. Most people call me Steve. Uh, I'm an award-winning entrepreneur, so I've won a few awards in the last couple of years, uh, some for my business and some personally. So I was a practicing chartered accountant for 15 years, which was a big, a really big part of my life, and I thought that was my passion, as, as it turned out over the last sort of year, 18 months, it, that wasn't the case, and, and now I'm pursuing that, which we'll talk about in a bit. But I worked with hundreds and hundreds of business owners from the year 2000, helping them to move towards an ideal business for them you know, whether that would be saving tax getting them time out of the business getting more profit you know restructuring exiting all top, different types of things uh, and i started i started my first real what i would say real business as an employee uh, as a, a chartered accountant employee of a practice in my local town in reading and the the business was bookkeeping so it's quite complimentary I was quite passionate, and I still am quite passionate about bookkeeping, and it might sound a bit daft, but you can't do anything else in business until you know what your numbers say to you, so the bookkeeping was really, really important. So I spoke to the partners there, we set up a separate business, which I found in my spare time, basically, looking after the, the clients that I looked after during the day, so by night I was a bookkeeper, by day I was, by day I was a chartered accountant, and, and that's... That's how I started, really. I grew that business, so in 2012, I could quit my day job and start my own chartered accountancy practice off the back of the bookkeeping business. And then, as I mentioned, last year, finding that 
it wasn't really the ideal business for me. I sold it just because I fell out of love with it, basically. So, you know, I've learned a lot of things not to do uh, and a few things to do. So if it, hopefully today I can share some of those mistakes with you and you feel a bit more yeah, happier, you know, knowing, knowing a certain path rather than being a, a little uncertain about how to proceed. My, my big passion is learning, teaching, creating and mentoring. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm really, really enjoying and I love business and numbers. And that's why I was in the, the Chartered Accountancy game. I've got a book. I just mentioned this very briefly. I think you guys may well know from the post in, in the Libya Legend group that I've got a book coming out in June. It's called The Profits Principles, The Practical Guide to Building an Extraordinary Business Around Doing What You Love. And in the book, there's seven steps, the seven principles that define business success, basically, and whatever version of success that is to you, it, it will work. It's tried and tested. It's worked with my clients. It's working with me. It's worked for me previously when I sold my business as well. So it's a bit of my life story in there too. And the, the content of the book is what we're basing some of the, uh, the content today in, in the webinar. So I'm sure you'll find it really, really useful. Um, as I mentioned, yeah, I've, been, I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I've had some successes too, and I've been doing that for the last 16 years now. So what's the webinar about? So today, I just want to talk to you about the five key steps. So I mentioned there are seven steps in the profits principles. So that's the overall archering principles. But what we're talking about today, it, there's, five, there's five real steps to build your passion business so that you can basically, as we said before, give up your day job so that you can just focus on this full time. Uh, and I know what it's like. It can get quite intense, particularly working 60 plus hours just to you know, keep, keep up with the appearances at work because that's what it becomes in the end. Um, but also give a great value to your customers and your passion business. So we'll, we'll go through some of that, uh, making use of your time and how to deal with that. What's a passion business? A passion business is just something that you're really passionate about, that you've been able to create a business out. That's effectively what it is. So it, it, it says what it does on the tin. I've made a few assumptions. So today, you're going to get the most value out today if you have already found your passion, so you know what you're passionate about, that you've already started your passion business, so that you, you've made at least one sale in that passion business. And I've made an assumption too that you have a day job which supports your day-to-day -day, and the passion business is something that you're building and it will eventually you know, support your day-to-day. -day. And today with the webinar, hopefully that will speed things up and just give you the ideas of how, how to do that and in a safer manner too as well. Um, it's ideal, This is the process is ideal for practitioners or professionals. So coaches, consultants, therapists, designers, trainers, they, those types of, uh, of occupations Basically, anyone who sells time for money, you know, the, these are the people I, that I can help the most and these principles will help the most. And it's, it's, if you're not part, if those assumptions are slightly wrong, you, you may still get some value from today, but it, just, it might not just hit home as much. So do stay on, do stay on and hopefully you'll get something. But those are the assumptions I've made based, uh, based on the post before, to, before today. So the five steps, these are the five key steps to be able to break away from your day job and have a passion business that can support your lifestyle. So step one is having the right business owner mindset. So that's thinking in a particular way. You know, we're, we're coming from a place of being an employee and now we're going into a place of owning a business. So it's a very different environment and very, depending on the culture and the environment that you came from in your, um, in, in your employment, you may well, have a very, very contrasting approach. So the idea is just to help you understand what type of mindset and type of things you need to be thinking about to be able to, to build that business quickly and how you use your time. It's number one for a reason, this, the, those two things, because it's the foundation. So you think about building a skyscraper, you have to get the foundations right first before you can go up and it's the same principle here. So the next step is identifying your ideal customers. So you're going to use your story to create a niche. So you're going to find your ideal clients, your ideal customers, and use who you are. And it does require some soul searching. So this is quite hard. This is quite a hard step. But you know, you'll be able to utilize everything that you already have, and you may not be able to see it 
and which is why it's quite difficult to create that niche and to really service it really, really well. The third step is a real biggie and a, and a real life changer. It's creating packages instead of selling time for money. So it's you know, giving value to your customer base, but structured in such a way so that it's not you know, X per hour or Y per day. It's working on a, a basis that you've created something and there may well be other people involved, no other business owners involved, but you've created something that gives more value to your customers. So, and, and at that point, they're likely to be willing to pay you more because if there's more value, the price can be slightly higher. So we'll cover that in more detail in a moment. Getting your fourth step is getting your message out there and selling in the right way to your niche. Now, a lot of people don't like the term selling or sales. Oh, sorry, guys, have you just lost the slides? <laughs> Excuse me. Right, here we go. I'll be back. You love technology and uh, fingers touching the keyboards. Okay, so uh, yeah, selling is a dirty word in some quarters, but what this pro process will allow you to do is get to a point where it's not selling, it's just a logical next step. So your job would be not to mess up the sale rather than try to sell because you've tuned your message really well to your client, your target clients, your target customers, and they basically want to buy what you have. It's up to you not to mess up you know, the process of, of getting them signed up uh, and getting paid and then delivering the great value that you'll be able to deliver. And the last step, which brings it all, all into, uh, into a full circle, is creating systems. So you may have heard about systems and processes they're slightly different. So a system is a sub is is made up of processes. That's the, the definition that I have. And the idea is that you create systems and processes so that every time you or another member of your team creates a piece of work or does something, answers the telephone, responds to an email, delivers to a customer, whatever it would be, it's done exactly the same way every single time because you know that that way gets results, and then you tweak and manage the process as you go. So. Let's, uh, let's jump in straight straight away into the into the first step, the right mindset. So if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to come to the top point last because I want to go through that with you in a little bit more detail. So the employee versus job owner versus business owner. We'll cover that in a second. But So the next point is being your authentic self. So you may have experienced this in life generally, that when you are with people who seem genuine and you are genuine yourself to those people, you, you know, your, your authentic self, it just seems so much easier. Life seems to flow better. It's more enjoyable. You know, so that's one reason for, for advocating the authentic self. But another reason is that people really buy into that. So if, if they like you, they're going to want to do business with you. So we're talking about your prospective customers and clients here. When I say customers and clients, it means the same thing. So I'll, I'll probably interchange between the two, but you, you should get my drift. It, it's really important. It's really important that they understand who you are, so why you do what you do, and that they're able to see a bit more of your authenticity in basically just who you are because people are attracted to other people that are similar and life's so much more fun when people are like-minded and you share common interests and common goals and think the same way in certain cases. So it's really important just to take a step back and think about how genuine you feel you being right now, you know, is something that you know, I, I'm not always 100% my authentic self. I think it's a really hard thing to do, but I always strive to be. It's just a question of how much I am of my authentic self. So it is a journey as well. So it's a really important thing for you to be able to, to work towards. The next thing I wanted to talk about with the mindset is responsibility. So Everything that happens in your business is effectively your responsibility. Now, lots, uh, I, see, I saw a survey recently where lots of different reasons were blamed for the, you know, the poor performances of, of local small businesses in the UK. And that was things like the tax regime, the poor economy, competitors, you know, lots of external things. Now, yes, they do have an impact. They do have an impact, but they are not to blame because Ultimately, the buck stops with you as the business owner. You every day make choices. You make choices on what it is that you're going to do in your business every day. You make choices on who you're going to sell to, who you're going to work with, what you're going to sell, and how you're going to deliver that. And 
that proposition allows you to be different and be, set, be your authentic self. There's no one else out there who's you. You're the only person. And you may have heard people talk about to be successful, you have to differentiate your business. You have to be either better or different. Well, you can be both, but the easiest way to be different is just to be yourself. And that allows people to really resonate who resonate genuinely with you. And that's how you start to, to build your business and before long skyrocket up that skyscraper. So being 100% responsible for your business and the actions that you take in your business is another mindset step to take. And it can be quite difficult sometimes. As I said a lot of people do think that it's external factors, but it's the internal factors that are most important. So the, the next step is, is gratitude. It's just being grateful. And it may sound a bit paradoxical, a bit weird, is being grateful for when things don't work out because that allows you to learn from it and not make that mistake again or to find a, an opportunity in that mistake. And just expressing gratitude allows you to be present in the moment and really enjoy what's going on and understand how things are going. And, and it, people really appreciate it too. So, you know, if, you, if you're grateful for somebody's help, they'll be grateful that they helped you. So it's a wonderful feeling to, to spread around the world. And the last thing that's really, really important is to make sure that you have fun in your business and build some fun into it. It could be anything, you know, it could be silly, silly dress days or it could be, you know, things you do with your customers on a night, you know, to have fun nights out. It can be anything, honestly. Use your imagination that it's... Uh, it, it just needs to be fun, otherwise, well, what's the point, you know? <laughs> the last point, I know this is something that Scott really advocated and you know, Live Your Legend are really, really connected with, is spending the time with the right people. And that goes without saying in life in general, but in business too, it's just being around the people who have done what you've done or the people that you aspire to be like, the people who you want to work with, the people who you want to work with you in your business as your team as well as your customers so it's it's getting that right blend so that you know, i think the the jim Rohn saying is you're the average of the, the the five most the five people you spend most time with so i think that that plays really 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 well in business that, that if you're if you're with the right people your business is going to do much better as as a result and be more fun and you'll be more uh, more grateful for it too. So as I mentioned, why is this important? It's the foundation of your business. It's the foundation of your skyscraper, and it will basically set you up for failure or success. If you get the fact, if you get the mindset right, then you're the, you know, the sky's the limit. But if you get it wrong, you're going to find it hard to get up to those next levels. It's going to be a real grind. So the uh, one thing that you can take away and do immediately is is give time to yourself, so get away from all distractions. Uh, and just time to think and, and, and to be calm and at peace with yourself and work on your why. You know, why did you start your business in the first place? What is it that you're really passionate about? And who are you authentically? There's, there's a really hard questions to answer and it's not going to come in five minutes. It will come probably over hours and hours over a period of months, maybe even years. But it's important just to start that process because as I said before, it's, it's, I think it's really hard to be 100% authentic all of the time, but there's no reason why you can't strive to be, and that is a journey, and the more authentic you become, the more you learn about yourself too. So use of your time, this is a really, a really big one as well, as you said about the foundation, is that it's, it's okay, when you start off, it's, it's pretty tough because you have to do everything. So there may not be enough profits in the business to pay for other people to come in, and you have to do things yourself. And you know, all of the admin, all of the finance, all of the delivery, all of the selling, all of the marketing can be pretty tough. But ideally, where you're coming from is you do what only you can do. So that means if there's something else that somebody else could do in your business, they should, someone else should do it. And at this point as well, it's like a case of giving permission, I suppose, is saying it's okay to ask for help. The, myself included I went a long long time trying to figure things out on my own and I'm laughing because it, it, now it seems quite ridiculous to me why I did that but that was how I was that's the mindset I had I just wanted to you know don't, it seemed, I'm a failure if I ask for help I don't I don't want anybody else's help I can do this on my own but it's only going to get you so far and that 
quicker you can bring people into your business to support you as part of your team, even if that's somebody, you know, doing some graphic design or answering some emails for you or um, delivering a small piece of what it is that you do, that's going to set you in great stead for the future because the, the mindset is if the, you, the more that you can outsource or delegate and the quicker you can do it, the more time you're going to have, therefore the more thinking time you're going to have for creating and giving back to your customers and creating new products and moving forward. So you, it's just like a, a um, I can't think of the word, but you know, an ever increasing circle of success. I think that's what I'm trying to explain, where you can you keep going forward and everybody wins, basically. Everybody wins. And the, the other things to think about is, so where are you currently spending your time now? And I just, it's really difficult at the beginning. I know this. I've, I've been there. You feel like you have to do everything. And what I did, whilst I was still part-time, I had my wife come help me, just do, you know, so a little bit of administration, just to help me do things. And then when uh, I grew, grew that business to, to support me full time, I then employed my mum <laughs> to, uh, to do some technical work, believe it or not. I trained her. She's no accounting background whatsoever. She's you know, okay with IT. But I trained her because I had great systems. This is the testament of the systems that she was able to deliver the pieces that I asked her to deliver. Obviously not client facing and not really high technical stuff, but administrative tasks, basically, processes that she could deliver. And in hindsight, it was probably a mistake getting a family member involved um, <laughs> for a number of reasons. But at the time, it worked. If I did it again, I would find somebody who could do those tasks effectively um, without too much training and input from me. In the end, I, well, to start with, certainly there's an element of time you need to invest in, in people when they're learning your systems. But yeah, it was a lot of time. Bless her. She was brilliant, though. A really massive, massive help in the long run. It did work out. But in hindsight, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again. So hopefully that's a, a cool lesson from the real world. Um, why is this important? Okay, if you, if you continually to do everything all yourself, you're going to be stuck on, on the treadmill. The treadmill, the, you, know, you feel like you're working really, really hard, but you're not really going anywhere. You know, like the, I suppose like a duck on a pond, its legs, its legs are pedaling really, 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 really fast to, to move, but it's just not moving anywhere in the pond. And that's exactly how you'll be. If you don't have the right mindset and most importantly, you don't utilize your time in the right way. So just do, do the things that only you can do. And the mindset you can have now, so what you can do about this now is, first of all, work on the most important things every day. So that might be just one task that's going to help you move closer to getting your ideal business. So getting closer to having that passion business that can support your lifestyle without having to have a day job as well. Do that one thing. You know, on, on the days that you do your work on the passion business, you don't necessarily have to do it every day. But obviously, if you do, that you'll get there quicker. And the other thing is to think about outsourcing and delegating from now. And just think to yourself, right, okay, what could I, what would be the first thing that I would outsource or delegate right now? And what are the things that I really don't like doing? I really dislike it. I don't like the, to use the word hate because it's quite strong, but the things that you really dislike doing, what could you outsource to somebody else? And the things that you shouldn't be doing, basically. You get these ready to give to somebody else. And in that process, you might find that there's things you can give away. And you don't need to pay people for, for this. I'm not saying <laughs> don't pay them at all or rip them off. But there's, you can make arrangements with people. So let's say, for an example, you wanted somebody to help you with some administrative tasks. Let's just say, for an example. And they needed help from you with the, the products that you offer. So there's no reason why you couldn't do a quid pro quo. You know, you scratch their back, they scratch yours. So there's no money changing hands, but you get that support and you get to help somebody at the same time. So that, that might be something to think about in one way that you can move forward without having the funds to, to do it. I'm going to jump back. So this is the entrepreneur's work-life matrix. This is the employee versus business owner versus job owner. So I'll just go through this very, very quickly. The idea here is this is a matrix. So I call it the entrepreneur work-life matrix. And uh, the idea is simple that 
I started, and, and I'm sure you guys did as well, started as an employee. So we had a single role and the, the function was reliant on us. So we were a small cog in a big machine, basically. Now, we're, some of you may still have that. Uh, I certainly did when I became a job owner. So that's the next logical step that happens. You become a job owner, so you basically say, yeah, I'm going to start a business. But you don't really have a business because it's completely reliant on you. And then the downside of that is there's multiple roles to fulfill. As you said before, there's finance, there's admin, there's the delivery, there's selling, there's marketing. All of those roles have to be fulfilled. So in your day job, you only fulfill one of those roles in one form of an, or, or, or another. But when you're a job owner, you have to do all of them. So adding that to being an employee as well is pretty tough. And here's where that's where the mindset shift is really difficult at first to grasp because you're used to just doing all things yourself as an employee. So in an ideal world, what we're trying to do is to get you to move up to being a business owner. So that means that you're, you still own your business as you do it when you own a job, but instead of owning a job where you have to do it all and it's completely reliant on you, you're moving to a place where you do one thing in the business or maybe just a couple of things, and the business is not reliant on you. So it's, it doesn't mean that you do nothing. It just means that if you had to take time out of the business, if you went on a five-week holiday, let's say for an example, you, the business would still work without you. It, it doesn't need you there to enable the business to function, in other words. And the single role, now most people think, oh yeah, I need to be the CEO of my business. You don't. You don't need to be the CEO. Most, it's a logical step for, peop, for some people who are really entrepreneurial, for sure. But technicians like us, and I'm assuming you're a technician like me, that you know, you're very good at doing something and that's why you started your own business, is that we like doing what we like doing. So for me, it's, it's mentoring and creating new products. So I love, I love doing those things. So yes, I do have the CEO role as well at the moment because I love doing that too. But those are the roles that I have. And, and I don't, in my other, my bookkeeping and management reporting business at the moment, effectively I am just the CEO of that business. So I, I, I suppose I'm a job owner with my business mentoring business because I'm a CEO too. And I'm a business owner in my bookkeeping and management reporting business because that works without me. You know, I don't, I don't need to speak to the team every day for it to work. It, it just does. Obviously I do speak with them regularly to make sure things work properly. So that's where most people will want to aim for. And it's okay if you just want to own a job, that's cool. That's no, that's no problem at all. It's just understanding the realization that if you don't work, you don't get paid. Yeah, that's the, the realization of owning a job. Whereas you own a business, it doesn't matter whether you work or not, you still get paid. The last step is the entrepreneur. And that's where you have multiple roles. So you have investments in multiple businesses and you may even have roles specific roles within those businesses as well but it's still not reliant upon you you have a team underneath you to do the same thing so it's like being a business owner but having multiple business owner businesses so i feel like that clears uh, that employee versus job owner versus business owner so it's a really important mindset shift to to make i'm going to stop that guys there's nothing in the chat i thought i just double check have you got any questions so far uh, I'll, I'll wait a minute or so just in case there's a lag, but I'll check on the, on the screen as well if you have any questions. No, cool, fantastic, I'll move on. So the next step, identifying your ideal customers. So this is something that is, when you look back, remarkably easy, or looking forward, it seems remarkably hard. And the idea is, I mentioned before, is that you, you use your, your life story. So you could do some, you know, some deep, deep diving into yourself to understand you know, who you are, what you love doing, what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and what you enjoy. So you, you can then take those things out to the world and help people with those. And your story is part of how you got to this point so far. And by looking back, and this is quite hard to do, and you might need to get the help from close friends or family. To, to pick their brains about you know, who you are as a person and what, what your best bits, what your strengths, what your values and how they see you. Uh, just because they have uh, you know, an outsider's perspective 
you, you know we all have self beliefs some of them helpful some of them not and they do interfere they're the unhelpful ones so it's, it's a really good idea just to get some external help from people close to you who know you really really well but by but looking back over your story you then start to think okay well how how can i help how can i help people by what i've experienced and that's how it how it worked for me was because i had gone from being a technician being a chartered accountant uh, having that part-time bookkeeping business building that business selling it creating a couple more it's like well the the story that i've been through is that i stopped selling time for money and i've gone from a place of employment job ownership to business owner and it just seemed a logical thing to me to do once i made that realization of course it was a couple of years in the making so uh just to just to warn you it does take a little bit of time just to, to dig into that but once you know who, that, who your ideal clients are so for me an ideal client as i mentioned before is a professional practitioner a coach a consultant a therapist a trainer and effectively anybody who sells time for money because that's what i used to do and i can help them stop to do that and create more value for themselves and their customers in, in the same process but in addition to that the areas that i love the most are technology and health and finance so those are the areas that i really specialize in because i love those areas and that's just my story so far and what i've experienced and what i love to do so it would be the same for you guys as well you know find find what it is that you're you're good at speak to other people and use your story to help you identify those people who you can help the most and one good thing to do as i said i made the assumption you guys have customers already is to speak to your ideal customers or speak to your customers already who are buying from you and understand why they buy from you as and if they say because you're cheap then you, you know we may need to have a discussion we'll talk about that in a moment when we look at the prices but is, is they bought from you for a reason and it could be because uh, well, hundreds of different things but it's good to know you know and if those are the types of customers you want to attract then you know what you need to put out there to get to get more of the same this allows you to create your niche you know people talk about niching all the time or niche uh, depending on how you pronounce it the, this is really important to start with particularly at when you're growing your business because you're laser focused in one particular area so it means you can deliver loads and loads of value so the saying is you, you go inch wide a mile deep so that you can deliver loads of great value content to, and help for a small group of people instead of going mile wide and mile, mile wide and, and uh, inch deep so not really helping anybody and just being too generic and people not really understanding what you do so yeah why is this important it's more fun more fun to work with people who are like you and you can directly help and it's easier to attract them and what you can do to to take this away is uh, uh, look at your customers already who are your best and favorite customers and why so said ask your customers why they buy from you and speak to your your close family and friends to understand more about how they see you, you know, how you, you portray yourself in the, in the real world so coming over the packages and prices this is the real life-changing section because you go from earning x per hour or x per day to earning z per you know period of time per package and the the idea is obviously it's not just to create packages for the sake of it but to create something that's of real value to your customers so you're going to need to speak with them you're going to need to do some market research about what their real pain points are what their real problems are and create those solutions and put it all together in one place so um let's say for the when i was in the accountancy business what we used to do instead of just doing the accounts and the tax returns and doing everything that they were required to by law we'd also have business strategy sessions quarterly or monthly depending on the size of business we'll have tax planning sessions we would uh, have a profit review session and we'll meet before the end of their financial year end so that we could look ahead to see how best to plan for tax and how their the business is you know performing in lines with their goals and we bundled loads of other valuable stuff in because we asked our clients what they really wanted wanted and we put that into packages and we created bronze silver and gold versions of those and the reason for that is well 
I think there's two reasons why we did that. One is because there was so much stuff that we could give. Uh, you know, we just wanted to really help people. And then when we put a price on it, we we're like, okay, not everybody's going to want to do that. So we created like a light version and a premium version of that. And the the other reason for doing it is about price psychology because some people will just want the best package regardless. And other people will go for the middle. Um, some people just have you know the, the, the eco package, but everybody has their own process and thoughts on um, choosing. And, and when there's three packages, three seems to be the magic number that you're able to get the best for them, but also get the best for you at the same time. So the prices differ in each of the packages. So your, your gold, your premium package is the highest price. Your silver is um, slightly lower and your bronze is lower still. And the value that you deliver is obviously less. So they, they get less value, but they pay a less price. So everybody wins, basically. You create packages that everybody, a broad spectrum of your clients can afford and that you're happy to deliver at that price. So they get great value and so do you in return. Uh, as I mentioned before about you know, working in a business on your own is that you tend to work on things 100% yourself. But the idea would be when you create these packages is to look at which bits can you get other people to help you with. As we said before, that could be monetary. So it could be for every package that you sell, you'll give a certain percentage to somebody else to help you deliver that package. Or you, you know, agree a flat rate. Um, or as you do a, a quid pro quo um, situation where you scratch their back, they scratch yours type thing. But definitely set these up so that you're not delivering all of them. So the extra time allows you to focus on more important things as a business owner that you should be doing. And um, the, the, the point, one of the point about the pricing is making sure that your customers can afford what you're delivering. So if, let's say, uh, for example, that, you know, there's your your marketing to kids, let's say, so to 18 to 21 year olds. They don't have a great deal of income and may not even have a job because of youth unemployment, unfortunately, at the moment. But if that was your target market, you wouldn't be selling them products or packages that are a thousand pound plus. Unlikely to anyway. Now, I haven't done any research on this, but I'm just making an assumption. You're most likely going to be creating content for them, maybe on a subscription model so that they pay 10 pounds or 10 bucks an hour, uh, an hour, sorry, a, a month in terms of belonging to a membership site where you're able to give them value or it's maybe 100, 100 pounds or 100 dollars for a particular type of program. And if you're working with billionaires, you know, or chief executives of uh, billion pound, billion dollar businesses, they, they wouldn't want to work with you if you, if you were charging, you know, 100 pounds per package. At that point, you would be looking at you know, five to six figures for your packages because one, they wouldn't take you seriously and two, if you're really able to help that group that they would be happy to pay for it and they can afford it as well. So it's understanding the, the pinch point in terms of affordability. It's hard not to make judgments anyway on price, but then you can always test the measure of your pricing as well. So if you don't feel you get it quite right, you can keep changing. So if you start too low, you can start to creep up. Or if you start too high and people aren't buying, you can start to come down to a point where people do buy from you. And as I mentioned with the tier price from the gold, silver and bronze, one of the other things that works with price and psychology is having the difference between the gold and the silver price to be smaller than the price between silver and bronze. That again helps with people making a decision to go for your core silver package, but also makes the gold package seem more affordable as well. So if someone's, if someone's already toying between gold and silver and they're not sure, yeah, a price, let's say, an extra couple of hundred pounds or dollars between silver and gold isn't, from some people, isn't going to make much difference. For others, it will. But if, you say, the price difference between bronze and silver was 500, people will either stick with the bronze um, or they feel that they can definitely afford the silver and therefore definitely afford the gold. So it's, a, it's an interesting price in psychology thing that I found. And it does work. And I said before, people as well do just buy they put in the top package just because they want the best. You know, they might not necessarily need it, and that's a decision that you can make, but they, uh, they buy the top package because they just want to. <laughs> and who are you to stop them? Unless you feel it's not, it's not worthwhile for them doing so. Uh, why is this important? So 
yeah that's, this is a life-changing thing don't sell time for money you know you you don't work on an hourly basis effectively yeah okay you still have an hourly rate but the hourly rate would be a lot higher we'd be able to manufacture a higher hourly rate without selling time for money and the idea is that you, you bundle things together in a whole inclusive package is really valuable to your customers and great value in return for you as well so what can you do about this so start thinking about it start thinking about what packages you can create that you think your customers would love go and speak to them about it so start with a silver package let's say for an example and then you know get some, get some feedback from them speak to other people have a look at your competitors as well just to see what other things that they're doing and what else you can bring into your own your own version of doing those things tweak make changes then create a light version so that becomes your bronze and create a premium version that becomes your gold and then there you have your packages so you're able to to stop selling your time for money guys any, any questions on that cool i can see you shaking your head crystal thank you let's wait a second or two if there's any messages come in the chat box no cool okay four step selling and marketing as you said selling is a little bit of a dirty word marketing can be too but the idea here is, is to think about marketing as just getting your message out to your ideal market. And your ideal market is your niche. So what you're able to do, because you've chosen an ideal customer base, you've got a niche already, is that you can really target and be specific with the information that you put out to them. So you can talk about the problems that they experience and how you solve that. You can talk about case studies, you've helped people already in the same situation as them it's basically just being able to really understand who your customers are and the problems they face and what a day in a life looks like for them and put that in your message out to them and they will either resonate with it because they see themselves in it and they can understand where you're coming from or they won't and marketing really is like a disqualification process you don't want to work with everybody. You only want to work with the people that you like to work with. And that's why choosing a niche is really important too. But within that, there will be people who come to you and want to buy from you. And you can make that decision. As we said, you take responsibility for the choices you make in your business, whether or not you choose to work with them. So if you feel that there's not a great connection or they just don't seem right, then maybe not the right place, right space to do business with you at this moment in time. You can make those decisions and those choices and you'll, you'll learn as you go along the more you do that it'll be the easier you'll be able to spot these types of things but that allows you to make that choice because the people coming to you are already want to buy from you because they feel that you can solve their problem you talk their language basically and it's genuine as we said you're coming from a place of authenticity so they really resonate with that on a personal level as well as on a business level too, that they want they want to work with you and they want your help. And the cool thing about when you write things in that way is that it makes it sound as if you're speaking directly to that person. And you may have seen examples of this yourself with you know with, with marketing. Yeah, there's some really great guys out there doing some good work, and they they make you feel like they really understand you and that they can help you. And that's what the same message that you want to portray up uh, to your ideal clients and customers so then the selling process as i said it becomes a, a point of don't mess up the sale basically they're already willing to buy from you and if you put any any content out there too they they'll be keen to learn more from you and to see how how you can help so it just becomes a process using your systems as we said we'll cover that in a moment to make sure that you get the right result at the end and you, you don't lose the sale effectively that's what it comes to why is this important? Well, if you don't sell, if you don't make any sales, you don't make any income. Yeah, and it's as simple as that, really. Uh, and this process takes away the dirtiness, too, from selling. So it's not about cold calling or being persuasive or forcing people. You know, obviously, there's lots of guerrilla tactics out there. This is about working with people who really want to work with you and you want to work with them and being able to solve that problem because you've delved, as we said, mile deep into their market and you understand their problems, understand them and what you can do to help. How can you, how can you, what you can do next and what you can do about it is to speak to your customers already and really get to understand what the problems are and 
I found this like when you speak with people and you say, you know, how can I help you? What's your current problem? What challenges that you're facing at the moment? Then it's very surface level that they'll tell you stuff. Oh, I'm just not making enough sales. Or yeah, my profit's not high enough. Or my my team don't work well together. Yeah, that's that's good insight. But you need to delve deeper and deeper. So you need to get to the root cause. So ask them why they think that is and what does that mean to them. Get deeper down into understanding what their real problem is and how you can help to solve that. So it becomes, as we said, a process of uh, don't mess up the sale rather than, than trying to sell. So systems, oh, wow, that's fantastic. This is a blank slide. <laughs> you guys have caught me out. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what systems are all about. Systems, as we said, are a collection of processes. And your processes are basically how you do things in your business. So like for me, for an example, when we had the accountancy business, we would prepare a set of accounts in a particular way. I think we had like a 32 step process that we would go through from uh, contacting the client to ask them to book in a year end meeting. So all the way through to the end, which was we called a profit review meeting. So when, once everything's done, we'd sit down with the client and work out how they could improve their profits. That was all documented and pro, uh, in a process. So it was like a, ch a ch checklist that people would tick off. And we would have videos and help sheets to enable anyone in the team to do one of those steps. So as I mentioned before, bless her, my mum, she's able to do some of those steps in that process and getting things ready for, for somebody else to do because it's basically like an, administ an administrative task. When you break things down, the, the delivery that you that you offer your customers there's some administration in there somewhere or there's some low level things that you don't have to deliver and somebody else who's bright who's intelligent who ha has an aptitude for what you're doing and believes in similar things to you can help you with that and as i said you don't have to pay them you can you can work out on things in a different way so quick quick pro quo is, is a great thing to do or give them a share of every sale that you make or a flat rate for every sale every package sale that you make so you always know that you're going to be be profitable the idea about systems as well is you may have had things that like mcdonald's is probably the biggest example of a fully systemized business now whether you um, what you have you believe about McDonald's and the food is one thing, but how it works as a business is something completely else. That how how they go from you know start, starting off in terms of asking you how you know what whether you want fries with that. Do you want to go large? Those are all systemized questions. It's a script that's used, so they know it maximizes profits, and it's all written down. They're all taught. All of the employees are taught to use that. So it's a a great example of you know, how to make the burgers, how to you know, cook the chips, the fries, you know, how, to, how to make the milkshakes. It's all documented and it gets the same great, I say great, <laughs> result every single time. So that the burgers all look the same, the fries all look the same, the milkshakes all look the same, they should all taste the same. So whatever, you, whatever your beliefs are about it, you know, I'm not a, a massive fan anymore. Used to be as a kid, used to love McDonald's, but not anymore. Um, whatever you think about the food, it's a, a fantastic systemized business and it works really, really well. So the idea is how can we bring that into your business? And the first thing to do really that is to think about your, your purpose. Why, why it is that you're doing what you do? We spoke about this a little bit earlier in terms of why, why you set up the business, but it's a bit, a little bit more than that. It's like, why are you trying to do something? You know, who are you trying to serve? What's the what's the bigger picture thing? What's the legacy that you're trying to leave? It's to start thinking the deep a bit deeper about the purpose of, of who you're trying to serve and what the business is is about. So, for an example, with the bookkeeping management reporting business, our purpose is to serve every business owner in the UK and be the number one bookkeeping and management reporting business to enable the business owners to make fact-based quick accurate business decisions about how to get to their ideal business and without the management reporting without the bookkeeping they can't do it and that's why i'm so passionate about it so i believe so much in it is because that's it's fundamental for any business that they have to have that in place if they really want to move forward so it's it's looking at that in a similar way in terms of what that means for your business 
the next thing that you would you would do ideally is to think about the culture so like the rules of the game in terms of what you will stand for what you won't stand for like with football or soccer you, you know there's 11 players on each team the pitch is a certain size uh, there's a football so, you know, some players stay in the goal and they can touch the ball with their hands and there's positions, there's tactics, you know, there's ways that when the ball goes out of play, there's ways that that's dealt with. Is to think about similar things into your business as well, the rules of the game. So that for, for our, the bookkeeping and management reporting business is that just a simple thing is that we have a really open mind and open policy with communication with all of our clients and all of the team. That's one of the rules of the game. It may sound simple and obvious, but once you've got it written down, everybody understands and, and believes in it. And it's, it's about being quick, making sure that we follow the system. So making sure that everything is in place, that we have rules of the game specific for our clients as well, because they have different ideas and different functions and, and wants. And, and the list goes on and on. It's, it's, it's about creating the ideal culture. You don't want to listen to me talk about my business. This is about your business. So what is it that you want to happen in your business? What are the rules that you want to create? So why, why systems important? Well, they allow you to get the same great result every single time. And the other thing is really cool is at the moment, if you're on your own, what you can do if you've written a system that you follow yourself, it's great for you to remember to do things. I've been there and done that and I've forgotten to do certain things. But it also allows you to teach other people. So when you do bring somebody in, you go, okay, yeah, here's the checklist. And this is how you do it. And the other thing you could do is bring somebody in, which I've done as well, and say, okay, I'm going to talk you through this process and I want you to make notes or we'll record a video and I want you to create the, the, the this checklist, the process that we're going to work for this particular area of the business and then we'll review it and we'll run through it to make sure that it works. And that's probably the most effective use of your time is getting somebody else to write the systems for you. It may not be possible, as I said, but, but doing it yourself will be really helpful just from that perspective that you won't forget to do the things. Uh, so I've been there and done it. It's quite embarrassing. You won't forget to do the things that you're supposed to do. Like I should have written a system for writing these slides, so I apologize. <laughs> okay, so that was uh, an overview. This is a, an overview, sorry, of the five steps. So that's all the five steps. So having the right mindset, is that business owner mindset, not the job owner or the employee mindset. It's the business owner mindset and using your time in the right way. Identifying your ideal clients, ideal customers. Using your story, one of my mentors, Daniel Priestley, he, ha he has a great saying, is you, you, you already stand on a mountain of value. So it's just about discovering what that value is, is digging down into that mountain. So it's the same principle for you guys is, using your story of what you've accumulated already, how you've got to where you are in your life right now, to help you identify who it is that you really want to work with and how you can help them. That will create a niche. And I think that's probably the easiest way to surmise. So it's hard work and it may take a, a, a long time to, to develop, but you know, test the measure. It's great just to have iterations and put yourself out there, see what works, what doesn't, and then move on to the next thing and, and keep going. Create those packages, you know, stop selling your time for money, create something that's really valuable to your customers, but also gets you more value back to yourself as well. And use those price structure, you know, the tiered price with gold, silver and bronze will really help you to sell more because there will always be people out there. You've probably heard of the 80-20 rule, Pareto principle. The, you know, this applies to when you sell to your customers as well because there'll be 20% of your customers that will provide 80% of your sales because they will always go to bigger packages. They always will. Or they want to buy more and more from you. They want to come, they want to help you develop the next package and so on and so on. To get your message out there, sell, sell in the right way, you know, get it, get it so it resonates with people and tells an honest story about you and what it is you can do to help and the problems that you've identified and how you can help with them and you know, talk directly to your niche and create those systems so that, you don't have to remember it all up here. It's all written down. You know what the next step is, and you can easily teach somebody else. So every time that the process is followed, you get the same great results. So that's a, a quick summary of, of the, the five steps. I just wanted to talk about an opportunity very briefly with you guys. That This is something that I've developed um, with the help of some of the Libya Legend members, actually, is 
understanding how to create that, that lifestyle passion business. So I'm hopeful that you've got at least one thing today that you can take away and utilize in your passion business immediately that will help you to make your business, build your business a bit bigger, a bit quicker, so you can give up your day job and you rely on the income from your passion business instead. But the idea is with the, with the passion business, uh, the lifestyle passion business program is that we'll work directly together. So, you know, you can take the steps that we've already discussed and you'll and work on your own and you'll get results. No two ways about it. It's really, it's really, you know, it makes sense. I mentioned it's in the Profits Principle book. It works. This stuff works. It's just putting it into practice. Now, some of you may be keen to do that on your own, which is fine. It's, you know, it's, it's something that we have to discover for ourselves. I mentioned before that it's, it's better to work with people, you know, we spoke about having the right people around you but if you're not ready for that that's cool too that's cool but the idea is with the program is be a very small limited group so maximum size of 10 have like-minded business owners and be in a similar position you know we've talked about my niche they're going to be in similar types of backgrounds similar types of problems it's going to go through these five steps in more detail over 10 weeks they're going to be some very hands-on stuff from me helping you and what I, I've done it because this is a pilot program. I just want to see how it works. That I know it's going to work really, really well because I've done this one to one. But I want to see how this works in a group format. So to to help with that, you know, I, I it hasn't been done before. It's a pilot, so I want to. I've heavily discounted it so that instead of it being six nine seven, it's one nine seven. That's the the investment for it, and on the basis as well that that everybody who applies will be a participant throughout the program and that they'd be open to a, a case study as well. That if, if it's been really helpful, that they'd be happy to write a case study. A discovery session would be required before we would start the program. So I just wanted to quickly talk about a discovery session. So the idea behind this is to make sure that the program is going to be of value to you, that you are, you know, you have that business already, you found your passion, you've got the types of problems that, that I can help with. But also to make sure that there's the right dynamic, the right culture within the group, so that everybody's going to get along and they're going to support each other, and it just makes fun. Like I said, it makes for a fun experience. We spoke about before. It, it makes learning fun. It makes the implementation fun, and then there's that extra accountability as well. If a discovery session is something that you're interested in, I'm running it on the 19th and 21st, I should say, not the 20th, the 21st of April. And the sessions, the, the price, the investment for sessions is £30. And really, this is just a token uh, price. It's a nominal fee just to stop people you know, wasting your time and, and my time because the discovery sessions will be group format as well. But what we're going to do is donate that to uh, a social entrepreneur to get coaching for three months via buy one, give one. So buy one, give one is a, a not-for-profit organization based in Singapore. And... They basically create projects or they put uh, charities in touch with businesses and you're able to support projects uh, just by you know, say coaching a social entrepreneur or giving clean water for one day for, so for one person or giving somebody shoes so that they can walk to school, that type of thing. So it's a really cool, really cool website. Do check it out. And that's what we're going to be doing. So the, the £30 for the session is going to go straight to coaching a social entrepreneur via buy one, give one. The discovery sessions bookings are going to close on the 13th of April. We can't keep it open too long, uh, so th th there's a little bit of urgency there. If you're ready to commit now, put the link on the screen so you're able to go ahead and pay via PayPal to, to book your discovery session. And once it's booked, we'll record that over emails to the best time and whether the 19th or 21st is the best date for you. If you want to know more, if you're not, if you're interested but not ready yet. Um, email me at info at endgamesuccess.com and I'll get the brochure over to you for the program so you can look into a bit more detail. So I haven't really touched on it. We've gone through the principles of it, what it's going to be, but you'll be able to read a bit more, a bit, read a bit more about me and what the program can help you with. So drop me an email. Uh, obviously, I said the, the discovery session is closed on the 13th, so um, either email me now or within the next... Uh, day or so just so we can get the discovery session booked in if it's something that you you wanted to do so guys i just want to say thank you ever so much i've been really nervous this is my first webinar so thank you so much for sticking with me thank you for the uh, the discretion 
of uh, indiscretion, sorry, of missing that whole slide around systems. Uh, kids if I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but if you're visual, I'm sorry that you couldn't get that on there. I really appreciate you being here and supporting me. Thank you ever so much. I hope that you found at least one thing that you're going to take away and you can implement immediately into your passion business and move towards having that as your passion, your lifestyle passion business and give up your day job. And as I mentioned in the Live Your Legend post on Facebook, just to show my, my gratitude and appreciation that if you would like three chapters for free of my forthcoming book, then please email me at book at endgamesuccess.com. You'll love a typo. You should say .com there, not um. Uh, and I'll, I'll get the copies, the three chapters over to you, some of which will, will go into a bit more detail what we've talked about today, and I'm sure you'll find uh, even more helpful. So, I'd, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you very much, and if you have any questions, yeah, fire, fire away. So you can unmute yourself in the, uh, the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, or you can uh, type, type in the chat. But, uh, yeah, I so said thank you very much and yeah, far away if you have a question. Um, I just wanted to ask, when you first started your business, how did you go about finding your clients? You know, was it through connections or, um, you know, did you find them online or how did you go about doing that? Great question. And this is something that, that everybody is able to do. It's just a question mm -hmm. of what that looks like for you. So for me, I saw the opportunity with that book, with the first bookkeeping business that I had and offer those services to the clients that I served during the day as a chartered accountant. So mm -hmm. my, my employer, I went to them and said, look, we're not doing this job. And they're like, no, no, our charge our rates are far too expensive. You know, it's all charge body hour stuff. Um, well, they need the help. What, do we know any good bookkeepers? Let's not, get, let's not get involved with that. I say, well, I'm really passionate about it. It's going to make our job easier when we're preparing mm -hmm. the accounts and helping the clients. Not only that, it's going to help them make better business decisions. So is this something that I can do? And they're like, okay. Well, if you do it all in your spare time, it doesn't interfere with your day job, then, yeah, crack on. So that's what I did in the end. So I was able then to speak to the clients I already had access to. The mm -hmm. other, my other colleagues who with their client bases, I was able to ask them to ask their clients in the same situation. Mm -hmm. So not everybody did it, but you know, the market was there already. So there will be somebody that you know or you have access to that will be able to put you in touch with the right people. I mean, mm -hmm. can, Christo, is there is anybody that you can think of immediately to, to speak to in your network? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it's also, um, I definitely struggle with um, like processes and time management. <laughs> you know? so, so yeah, it is actually like, um, yeah, finding the time to, because I, cause I have my day job and then yeah. I find that it can um, take over my life and then the other things that I'm doing. And so it's like, actually putting the processes in place to really have the time to do everything yeah you, you know you're right and one of those we're talking about the important tasks one of the important tasks one of the first important tasks you would do is write those processes and put them into place mm. them, just a simple checklist a brainstorm even if it's like 10 minutes whilst you're having a coffee break mm -hmm. it's, it's just to jot something down just to get you started i know what you mean it is really hard i'm I was working crazy hours at one point where it's just I wasn't didn't see any of my family didn't see any of my friends I didn't see my wife and mm -hmm. it, was, it was ridiculous and it showed physically too yeah you know, it's it's just not a great place to be so the last thing I'm going to say to you is I'll just spend more time doing it <laughs> that's just it's not going to work but mm -hmm. the key is you need to find the time so in those snippets of coffee breaks maybe whilst you're at your day job that you, you're able to carve out some time so that you can focus on your own business mm -hmm. and, and the processes will definitely definitely help you but it, focus on one task and it yeah. might be a case of like oh man instead of vegging out in front of the tv this evening i'm going to spend 20 minutes writing down a bit more brainstorm about the process that i'm going through or, or how I'm going to speak to this person to introduce me to 
their clients or their contacts you know, how, and how I can help them. Mm. So bite-sized chunks is a really good way, a good way of moving forward. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you so much. Does that help? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Cool. Good mm -hmm. stuff. I'm just going to check the chat, see if anybody's got anybody else has got any questions. Cool. Nothing in there at the moment. Guys, feel free to, to drop a question in the in the chat box and uh, unmute yourself as well. If there's something you just want to say hello, just uh, unmute yourself and say hi. And if there's something that you want to, to ask, I'll give it another minute or so just to see if anything else drops through. But again, guys, honestly, thank you ever so much. I really do appreciate it. And as I said before, I appreciate the feedback on the book cover and you know, the overwhelming favorite was B, and I've been speaking with the, the publisher and the designer to get some elements of, of A and D tuned in as well. It's really interesting that I was drawn to A to start with. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I apologize. It's, it, the, the, the book cover post is in the Facebook group, uh, Live Your Legend Creators Guild. Uh, but there was A, B, C, and D, the different types of covers. And uh, A really drew me the simplicity of it, but then B just had something about it. and. Hopefully, as well, you, you would have seen from the webinar that we've been through, from the slides, that this is a proven process that will focus on you individually and enable you to build the profitable business. And when I say profitable, I mean, okay, yeah, money terms, profitable, but valuable to your customers, valuable to your team, and valuable to your life, so that everybody profits from, from this approach and that you use your own uniqueness. You, you leverage your authentic self to, to go out there and you know, do what you're supposed to do while you're here on this earth. So thank you very much, guys. Okay, oh, I've got a question in there. And uh, Garrett, I think, is that how you just, is it Garrett D? Is that how, how to pronounce your name? Thanks, Steve. I have to run to another call. Okay, thank you very much. Really appreciate you being here. I wanted to support you. Oh, yes. Thank you. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for tuning in from the San Diego Club. And I, I really do appreciate you being here. Thank you. And uh, thank you to the rest of the guys. And I wish you a good day ahead. And uh, maybe to go back to sleep as well, for those of you who have got up early. And uh, yeah, any, anything, any questions, anything else you think of, drop me an email, info at endgamesuccess.com. And I look forward to speaking with some of you soon. So thank you very much, guys. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Hazel. Thanks, Carmen. You're very welcome. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. It was really good. So, thanks, Christo. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.